Okay. Oh, Tristan. Okay, I mean, since we have one or two people joining, um, good afternoon. Um, I think we would just like to wait for a few minutes, maybe three, four minutes more, to have a few more people join us, then we can start. Is that okay? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. A second. I guess. So for those just joining us, we just decided to give people some bit of time to join. Uh, but whatever happens by um, five, sorry, three or five, we'll get started. Okay, uh, it's 3.05 by my watch. Uh, good afternoon, um, uh, beautiful audience. Um, it's good to be here again on Life and Direct. Uh, Life and Direct, as you know, is um, being organized by the AAAN, that is um, Association of Advertising Agencies of Nigeria. Um, uh, Life and Direct, we started sometime last year during the pandemic as a way of getting people together to share thoughts and um, hopefully inspire one another. 
Uh, today, I have a very important session um, because this is a session that is dedicated to the issue of women um, in advertising, uh, especially when it comes to creative leadership and leadership uh, in general in advertising. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that um, as we go along, we'll have a few more people. I think we do have quite some number of people now. Good, join us um, because I think it's a very important conversation to have. I, I hope we can thrash everything today. Um, otherwise, uh, we can always have uh, another session uh, with uh, with my guests for today. Uh, without wasting more time, I'd like to introduce my guests. Um, I have two beautiful women in. Um, in my corner today. <laughs> I have here, I have um, uh, Rita Ezenwa Okoro. Uh, Rita I've known for, for a while uh, as a creative um, before moving on to, you know, daring business and starting business. Um, so Rita is a principal communications consultant and chief creativity officer of ROC, uh, Strategic Communications. It's so long, you know, you're gonna tell us more about that. <laughs> later. <laughs> and I also have with me here my sister. Um, we call her Madam Chair, talk by Jeme Ribe, um, the CEO MD of uh, DKK uh, Nigeria. Um, it's such a pleasure to have you both, you know, uh, on this session. Uh, we have one hour for our talk, and I'll try and keep the questions as minimal as I can so that um, we can allow for our audience to also ask questions or make contributions. Um, um, that's my that's my that's my thinking, so that um, the issue can be well attended to. Uh, my name is Larry Adisa. For those who are joining for the first time, um, and I'm very delighted to have this session this afternoon. Um, uh, and the topic for us is about the issue of uh, uh, you know the role of women in creative leadership in advertising. Um, let me, I'm, I want to be sure that I'm getting that completely right because <laughs> yeah. I'm mixing things up. Um, so yes, it is um, basically saying winning with girls, powering female interest in the creative industry, winning with girls. Um, but I guess I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm going to start off first by asking um, Rita in particular, Tell me about your journey into advertising, especially the creative uh, side of things, you know, um, and maybe in going through your journey, we can also map out what other people's journeys might be um, as regards the challenges and the opportunities in this industry for women. Mary, thank you so much, um, Mr. Adessa. Thank you so much um, for the opportunity to be here. Mm, I stumbled into advertising really, um, so after my um, youth service, because I studied creative arts in University of Lagos, um, and I knew what I didn't want to do. I was very clear. I didn't want to work um, in the white collar job. I was very, I knew I didn't want to work in the bank, even though I was really young at the time. Um, and other things. I knew I just wanted to follow my passion. I wanted to do what I loved. Um, and so one, one of the first places that I worked in, um, it, it started out by volunteering was um, at Ayo Bankale Studio, oh. um, <laughs> where I, I interned um, learning how to become a studio engineer. Um, in the process, I had a friend who at the time was working in an ad agency, and she told me about how wonderful and she was an account um, officer at the time. And she told me about everything she was doing. And I was practically saying, that's what I've been doing all my life. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and through her, I then started and that's Aura, um, Aura Ego. And um, yes, who happens to be um, one who works in the in the client side now. Um, and through that, I then started, you know, putting out my CVs. Um, and then I met Kenny Badmus um, at that um, 
at, at the recording studio. And he also knew Aura at the time. And I told him about my interest in coming into the industry. Um, and so I just started doing copy tests up and down the place. I remember going to Taijo Wan Mukabe at the mm. time. Um, I, did, I, I did a copy test and they were quite intrigued that I was also learning how to become a sound engineer. And so they were like, you know what? would love to take you in, but would like you to finish your internship as a sound engineer and we can bring you on board. Um, but fortunately, the first organization I worked in was um, Explicit um, Advertising, um, where I worked for six months and then moved on to Prima Gannett and my journey started um, from there. Um, one of the things I did identify along my journey was that I was um, always only the, um, the female creative in uh, a unit that was um, highly dominated by men and still is. Um, sometimes it would be like a 10 to two ratio, mm -hmm. was never more than two females, maybe one female copywriter and one female who would dare to become a graphics designer. And, th <laughs> and this was my journey all through and um and i really did not besides uh, at the time um was it uh Akpo, um and uh, who else were female creatives at the time um who i i, I met at s1u at the time there weren't many female creatives who were at the top of the ladder um the only who at the time were close to becoming creative directors were associates, deputies, and the rest of it. And, and I kept me thinking, what's the problem? What's going on? Why aren't women climbing up that ladder? Um, and one thing that I knew, I was damn good at my job. And I made sure that everywhere I went to, I show that. However, rich in the zenith, um, of, of one who worked as a creative was quite a struggle. Even when um, I would show my competence, the next thing, you know, um, that would be a, a point of conversation was, can she handle the guys, you know, as opposed to, can she deliver? Um, the standards were obviously very different. Um, and, and that was a challenge that um, I identified um, and really was the catalyst for leaving mainstream everyday advertising to going out and then consulting. And at the point of consulting and knowing my value, I then started consulting as creative director for some organizations that were willing to promote me and to that point. Um, and that's really what was the catalyst for creating something that would um, be a, become a value chain um, for young women to keep coming into the industry and um, also partnering with women in advertising to ensure that young women are mentored to be able to reach the very height of their creative careers in advertising. Beautiful. Thank you so much. We're going to come back to some of the things we touched on, but I, what, what struck me uh, that you were always the only one um, in the group of so many men. Um, yes. Uh, or the fact that, you know, there are always questions about whether you can handle the guys. Um, very interesting insights. Um, we'll come back to some of those matters. Uh, Tope, um, is it because of the challenges of handling the men, so to say, uh, or the boys, as the case may be, uh, that we tend to see more women in the, on the business side of advertising, you know, uh, as account service people and stuff, the like of that. Uh, I mean, maybe you just want to give a bit of your own journey and, you know, go a bit more in terms of how business treats women, so to say. Yeah, well, um, I'm, I'm not sure it deliberately happens as such. It's just that we tend to have more women um, on that side of the business, the account management part of it. But that still doesn't dispute the fact that there's still that huge gap. So yes, at the middle level, you perhaps have a lot of women, 
but growing to that C series, you still will find it's a lot of men. If you understand what I'm saying. So yeah. yes, within the, the middle cadre where you have the creatives, uh, the copywriter, manager and everything, you'd have enough, you'd have more the men in the creative space and then you have more women in the account management space. But at that top where Rita was speaking about, um, still remained very strongly. If you look at even what of things now, if now we even have quite a number, a, a few more f- female at the top, it was very male dominated. So at the middle level, yes, the ladies were more in account management and the guys more in the creative, but the ladies still were not also getting to that level um, mm-hmm. that Rita referenced. My own journey was a little more deliberate. I studied communication. Um, and I mean, I'm a talker. I grew okay. up <laughs> chit chat all my life. So I wanted to do law. The time they would say law, I was going to say that. You know, I, yes, say I was going to do law. Yes. <laughs> all of us. I, I could argue, I could, you understand, I knew how to make my points and all of those. But as the journey went on, I, I couldn't get admission into um, school on time and all that. Then I began to. What are the options? The second option, of course, was going to be communication. It came naturally. I finished school. When I was in school, I went to a polytechnic. And there's that discrimination that exists already. In the university and the polytechnic. Yes, yes. But I wasn't going to be defined by that. I knew, I mean, I knew I am quite smart. And so I'm not going to be defined by where you finished from or what, what is it. So at the time as well, I was very deliberate. What industry would I go to that would look at what I've got upstairs than where I am coming from? So the bank wouldn't do that. The bank would hire you as bulk Why tellers. You, everybody doesn't like the bank. I mean, but that's where the money is. I mean, Rita yeah, said, I don't want the to money go to the is, bank. But the discrimination <laughs> against where I'm coming from was very strong. They, would make, they were offering me to be a bulk teller. Larry, imagine I got so desperate and took the bulk teller job. <laughs> Look at the potential and what, how far I have come. Do you understand? <laughs> so I was very deliberate looking through it and I knew that the communications industry was a bit more um, wide open yeah. for, I mean, it's your creativity, it's your ability that would actually define how far you go and everything. So that's made right from school, I knew where I wanted to go. I knew what the options were. It was either going to be broadcast or advertising, Mm. you know, and advertising, it's just been fun all the way. I started off with this to be my can, and, you know, it's been that. And, and, And the growth is faced, even with account management, we have actually faced the challenge of, are you going to be able to handle the boys' club? That's the truth. So even at my C-suite level, at whatever thing, there are times that you just, we've gone for briefs that the feedback, legit feedback came back and said, ah, because it's female, you won't be able to go, you know, all these club things, all this whatever thing, you they, they need to hang out. The CEO is very particular about that. The way I, the way I hang out, eh? Yes. <laughs> like, I can do so much, but really, you can only do so much. Uh. That's the truth. I mean, you're not going to be all those angered. I don't let me open your secret here, Larry. You know, <laughs> but I was we just saying, hang you know, out when the men, yeah, when the <laughs> men, so when the men sit together and all of those kind of things, you begin to wonder. So there's been that. But one okay. of the things that has informed and instructed, if I had a mentor when I was when I started, it wasn't a mentor that was as deliberate as we do now. Like mm. we have digital Amazon and we're holding people's hands and trying to say, you know, we'll join this mentoring club. No. I just had someone I looked up to, Mrs. Alabi. I wanted to be as good as her. I wanted to be better than her. And I mm. pushed, do you understand? I told myself I was going to be nothing less than a client service director in this industry because that's what she was. Yeah. So when I got my first job as a client service director, it was almost like, okay, so you have reached On there. That. <laughs> but of course, when you get there, you now begin to look at it that, no, there is somewhere else you actually, there's a top. What stops you from also going there? And that's actually what my own journey has been. And so that when I got the job and everything, of course, because the interest was there, I recall getting the first job and calling her, celebrating it and all that. And when I got the other one, she called me to say she'd always hoped that you'll do, and you will do better than I did. You will do whatever. And so at the end of the day, mine was a little more deliberate. The journey yeah. was a little more um, straightforward. But 
the challenges is not any different. They're not any different. At the top, when it comes to getting to that top, you, you then begin to see more men than okay. you will win. Okay, you, you said something, and I wasn't too sure about that. You said something that um, perhaps we have more women now than then. And I, I would like to disagree with that. Because okay. I remember when I started, um, uh, Mrs. Thomas was at uh, LTC. Uh, you had uh, Ngozi Danisa at, uh, uh, at STB. That was not Kolyo Bolu, Isabel. You had, uh, you had Julia. Tola, yeah, had we also had Tola, and Tola, and Yes, this there were Tola. more women holding top positions in advertising back oh. in the 90s, uh, uh, going into, you know. Uh, so, so and, and I look at it today, um, it's not the same. You know, people drop off. I mean, we have them coming in, but somehow they drop off. And the question for me is, why do women drop off? Why do they, I mean, apart, I mean, you've mentioned one or two things, Rita, yourself. Why do any of you can go at this, you know? Uh, do they think there's no hope for them? Um, the question of, can they handle the boys and stuff like that? But women are made strong. I mean, for who are, yeah. men who are managed, we know that. that so why should you worry like, about them managing the boys? I, I'd like that's to say- someone, Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to say something about the, sometimes the assumption that we have that we had lots of women, um, especially, especially in the creative leadership. There were still a handful compared to men. You cannot compare. I agree. I agree. But there are lots of, but I agree that there were lots of women and still lots of women in advertising. But how many women are in power? How many women truly have a seat at the table where they can truly navigate mm. how advertising moves? How many women um, are visionary leaders that have a seat at the table that can determine what creative should look like. A lot of what we, um, we perceive and see as, oh, this is cans worthy, or this is hot, this is what should be out there. We're designed by, by design, um, led by a highly patriarchal society and system and structure. Um, but to answer your question, I would say three things. One, one of the reasons I think women drop off would be one, recognition. Recognizing that they are good enough for that role and recognizing them enough to be able to promote them to the level that they need to and pay them as they would earn, um, as their counterparts will earn. Secondly would be respect, respect in the workplace, right? No woman wants to be to work in a place where I remember um, Tokwe had given me um, some insight to how someone pat her bum and how she was able to tell him with a stern warning, don't ever do that again. A lot of women have to handle that in the workplace, especially in advertising. And that's the question of can she roll with the boys? Is it, It's either she turns into a tomboy or she turns into one who is ready to mingle with the boys in a way that would, um, would I say, question um, their capability on, on the job. And when a woman deserves a raise, let her get a raise. And another thing is the fear of I get married and I would have children. How do I handle the odd hours? Because working in, in creative was crazy. You'd work around the clock, especially because you want to show that you are also capable like the guys are. You can sleep at the agency just to beat those deadlines, right? You're working with crazy deadlines. It's crazy all over. Um, and I remember vividly that when I started my journey, and I, I know I was 23 at the time, when I started my journey, I'd already just seen how things were going. I'd mapped out my strategy because I knew I wanted to get married and have my own children. And I wanted to be there for my children. And these are things that women think about. And so I actually mapped out my exit strategy right to say this agent this agency work and the entire structure isn't created to nurture women to 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 um 
to live long <laughs> in the system. <laughs> so, I, I, what, what, okay. Which, okay. Is, which is which is really very true. I was I was also going to speak to the assumption that there were more. Um, it's not an assumption, perhaps with the names you called, but if you still look at the percentage of it versus yeah. the men, <laughs> there's no balance. Today, uh, we've had women, and if you look at it at the time, we didn't have any agency that was started off by a woman. She grew mm. to that role. Yeah. Bumi of Image and Time, she came and, and registered her agency. So it's more the ladies now, yes, even if the numbers are don't seem to... I mean, because we've not tried to look at the data and be able to cut, I can say to you categorically, there are quite a number. I mean, I've met a number of female CEOs who have started their own agency. They're not big enough to have come to join the association, but they're driving things. Some of the ladies we speak to or we're, we're mentoring or training through digital Amazon and some other platforms of that nature are actually doing their own thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but to, to answer the, the question, and in addition to what, what Rita said, um, I think I would, I, I would look at it more from the policies that drive HR within our industry. Um, so what, what, what ends up happening? Most of those we've lost, has gone, they've gone to client side because the client side has been a little more deliberate. They, are, they, they have structure. So you go to a multinational, that have structure to cater to the concern that Rita had, for example, instead of planning an exit strategy, if we were on the client side, you will be plan planning a growth strategy. Why? Because the platform to grow is there. You can be the create, they have, go to GTB, they have crashes, they have whatever thing that identifies the fact that being a woman, there were certain extra things by nature that is called of you, that is not called of men. How do you then, I, I mean, I know of people who have lost being promoted because they took a three months maternity leave within a given year and said, and the outright comments to that colleague of mine at the time was, um, you know, you were out of the office for three months. This was one of the strongest team members in account management and she went for three months and over. So, to Rita's point, that's a very, very big thing. You want your growth, your work, your ad working and all that, but the system wouldn't even cater to that. Another thing is, although for me, I think, we, and which is one of the things we started teaching the female, mm. how to manage things like that. There are strategies that I won't come and say to you here, Larry, yeah. but I'm saying that I'll give an example. I'm a woman, I need to take my child to, to for immunization. Yeah, That's yeah. my gate. I'm going to do it. And I come to the boss and it's like, she's always taking excuses. So we tell, don't say you're going to give your child immunization. I won't be able to make it to the office early enough. I have something to attend to. When the man comes to the office to tell you, oh, I won't be, I'll be running late until three o'clock. It just tells you that. Don't question do why. Something. You don't <laughs> question why. I come with a legitimate reason and you begin to hold it against me. It becomes, oh, she won't be able to do it. It's even assumed. Sometimes you're sitting and you say, who will drive this process? And you hear, um, maybe Kunle should do it. Why are you suggesting Kunle? Because you've already assumed that because Topa has got two kids, she won't be able to handle this, she won't be able to drive it. So we begin to look for strategic ways and deliberate ways to let you know that yes, I've got kids, I've made plans. We have support structure. We have ways we have that we can manage it. And you know, um, Larry, if you give the woman the task, half the time, He's done 150% times better than you would have gotten it because a woman has a level of commitment and drive, perhaps because they have to be twice as good as the man. I honestly, I mean, haven't drilled down into a study to look at that, but you will find there's a level of commitment and drive that you will get from the woman. So really it's, it's um, women go reward, as we also have said, you really recognize what it is I'm doing enough to know that I am deserving of that state. Mm -hmm. Or you just conclude it's a man that is going to be there because it's a man I'll be able to, so as the CEO, it's easier for me to anger with a creative that is a guy as well or whatever thing. There's those things that inform it. But the reason I'm saying we have it better now is that there's been so much talk about it at global level, at national level, at whatever level, 
that people are organization, our men are a lot more open. People are giving platforms to women to drive things now. People are, I mean, people are allowing, you're handing over and you're saying, I'm announcing the woman is going to be the one taking over from me. We've had female, female chairman of banks. We didn't have any such thing. All those names you called at the time, yes, they were senior people, but they weren't driving, as, as Kenil rightfully said, when the decision of how advertising is going to be shaped in the future is being made, they weren't at the table. They were okay. senior enough and creative, but they weren't at the table to take those decisions. Okay, so, so how can we be deliberate you know, in changing that narrative? I mean, that to me is perhaps even a more you know, germane question. Um, and I would like for both of you to talk about the digital Amazons, um, you know, um, which I believe was an initiative of Rita's, um, you know, yes. she partnered with um, Women in Advertising. Um, okay. I'd, like, I'd like to hear about that and how sustainable that is and how that is going uh, as one of the strategies, you know, of also bringing some inclusiveness, especially okay. in the, on the creative front for our industry. Okay, uh, le let me just say something, answer your first question, and then I will talk on why we went to Rita, and then Rita will go into the dream of building yeah. um, um, digital Amazon. Okay. So, uh, for example, there's, there's something women in advertising, there's, there's uh, something we're planning, for example. Um, we, but you know that started as a joke of sorts, you know that? <laughs> what started? We started, women yes, advertising. it was meant I to be. Like like women I'm in probably pointing that thing that we are. <laughs> <laughs> we used to call you where, and I remember yeah. my former boss. I will mention his name. One of my former bosses joking about it that we are in trouble. What is this one you gave me? This women, you know. But on a yeah. more serious note, where we are doing, there's something we are planning. There's this like a somewhat seminar that we're bringing um, to the table, talking to heads of agency, so that the HR or the function depart department that is responsible for resources and all that is a part of it to train people how to look. Let's look at the policies that exist now that drives it now. What are the things you need to pay attention to to retain those female talents within the organization? Let's, do you understand too? Where yeah. it's one of the things we have um, in the pipeline. Can, I mean, the details of it is not there because no we know that steps, the details of it we're working on um, because we know that as, you, as we keep, we've used the word deliberate so many times, if you know there's something wrong with something and you don't take steps and measures to address it, you're just going to continue talking. So it's sure. not talk, it's talk and action. So okay. we're doing, we're, 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 we're coming up with something on that. I mean, we have a lot of e for she's. In, um, Kelechi, for example, sits on, as a member, well, is, that a, is, that, is an advisor, but it's, and its contribution, a lot of times when we have our meeting, is quite phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. Steve, our current president, Steve, Jenkins, they were all a part of uh, members. I mean, at the time, we also debated, um, should we call them members of WEAR? Or, and we say you the have- Friends of WEAR. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's membership because there's no way you can drive the change without involving the men. Definitely. You Definitely. must bring them, they must buy into it as well, understand it, and then walk along with you. Okay, thank you. Just before we, okay, go on. You still have some points to make. Yeah, I was, I was just, just to say that people should please drop their questions in the Q&A box. Um, I'm going to attend to questions maybe uh, another 10 minutes or thereabout from now. Go on, please. Okay. Yeah, so to speak to um, Digital Amazon, so Rita had a vision that aligned very strongly with what WEAR was. And so when I took over as chairman of WEAR, we defined what our vision and our aim and goals were. And therein lies, apart from the fact that we were looking to grow the women within, we wanted to attract women into the industry as well. You know, fresh talents, people were female, the female um, interest, or the number of female interested in coming in the industry as well. When you look at it, particularly to the creative side of our creative business, broadly we call it creative, but I'm speaking now specifically to um, conceptualization, um, copy, doing the visual arts and all of those, you had less um, female that were interested. So there was yeah. an alignment. And when she came with the vision, it was a good thing we had our cocktail. COVID has prevented us from having the last couple of, um, we had planned one, um, another one in 2019. No, in March of 2020, 2020. 2020, but we couldn't hold it because of COVID. But what had happened is she attended it. And after listening to what it is, she had, 
she, there was a missing puzzle. There was a missing piece in the puzzle she had laid down. And it just kind of like hit for her that this is it. But that platform has also given us an opportunity to train and um, empower people that are already also in, in, I mean, we did a speed mentorship during one of the courts and all of that. So it's an alignment of vision that actually allowed street projects and women in advertising to collaborate. And we all know that today collaboration is the name of the game, really. Sure. So you've sure. got the idea, we have the know-how, we have the expertise, we have facilitators and all of this. But she's got the, the vision, she's got the drive. I, I, I mean, I follow her on everything. She's driving one creative thing or the other and I'm like, okay, this young lady, she's just very bright. So I would let her just tell you what brought the vision about, but our own role in it has been alignment. And we've measured the impact. I mean, the things we've done when she's talking as well, I'm sure she will speak to the partnership and grants we've gotten from the states and other parts where we had to measure impact. Do you understand? Alongside the SDG, UN SDG, it's, it's really very exciting on this. Rita. Awesome. I'm excited about this point <laughs> because it's about solutions, it's about fixing yeah. things. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, before I even talk about digital Amazons, I, I want to answer your question directly as to how we can retain and, and um, keep female creatives <laughs> in the industry. Um, one of the things that also drew, that was more like the strategy for digital Amazons was more like the more we let the women in, the more possibilities they would climb up the ladder with a curator or with a mentor by their side. So that's number one. Number two is thinking developmental um, in an industry like advertising as opposed to because when you think developmental it's it drives value and the money will come and and thinking developmental as regards gender is so important and i love when you were talking about the policies and i remember during the cocktail one of the things that i kept saying was for women to thrive in advertising it has to be intentional because what we're talking about is a global issue and how can we be intentional we can start with our policies you know across agencies and saying okay in the next five years let's make this happen for women in our organization even in in, in getting people registered into the association they're setting demands as regards gender equality in the workspace that should be implemented to be able to drive these this this course about having more women in the space it's it's a very very important um and also the the whole idea of measuring measuring data and impact and um that's what we're doing with digital amazon so um we have this idea that if we're able to expose as many young female creatives who have just raw creative skills, because one of the, the challenges I, I noticed whilst, you know, as a creative in advertising was always, where are the copywriters? Where are the creatives? They are scarce. They are scarce. And then I just couldn't understand it um, and really was about capacity strengthening. And then coming out into the development space and seeing a lot of young creatives who just need direction. We're able to create a platform where young women who are gifted in visual arts, illustration, who are interested in content development, telling, telling stories, um, we're able to funnel them into in the industry through a process application. It's stringent. Um, and then the approach to learning is as hot as it would look like when you are in, <laughs> um, in the depth of trying to beat a deadline, you know, um, in advertising and prepare them for what's to come. And then the partnership with women advertising was just in sync because we're looking for that funnel into um, ensuring that, okay, after we train them, where do they go to? 
How do we sustain them? And that was where women advertising came in, ensuring that we get placements for internship for them and mentoring. And we started this in 2019. And um, we started with 43 young women, out of which 80% of them were placed on internship, out of which 25% of them were retained. Okay. In less than a year, one of um, our digital Amazons, Dami Lola, who works, I think, in TBWA, mm -hmm. she's known yeah. as Wild Chocolate, won the Peacher for filmmaking, the Peacher Awards for filmmaking. Um, which and, and it was experimental. Now we've gone on to train another 31. And it, between now and next year, we're looking at training 200 young women and pushing them into the industry and ensuring that the industry sh is developmental enough to um, raise this amazing raw talents to the position of leadership. Mm, that's amazing. I mean, I mean I have, to, I have to repeat that word <laughs> because um, uh, it, it's something that I believe the industry needs. I, on a personal note, I've always been interested in female creatives because yeah. um, because there are certain subjects that are certain, even if any subject for that matter that a woman brings a particular kind of sensitivity to uh, can make a difference. Um, uh, the maybe line, for instance, you know, the post message range, you know, came from a woman thinking, you know, maybe she wears it, maybe she doesn't wear that. Uh, and that won't come from a man. You know, there are certain things a woman will see that a man will see differently. That's not saying a man cannot work on female-oriented products or brands, as the case may be. Uh, but I think we're missing out a whole lot of, you know, good things if we don't involve, you know, women you know. Across, across board. Um, so I'm amazed. I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, now, now, how do you ensure that they don't also run into some of the things that made you have an exit plan? Huh? Because it's one thing to get into, get into the industry. It's another thing for you to stay on there and hopefully, you know, start something of your own uh, or rise to the highest position in the organization. And looking at where the world is today with all, because the, the concept of work is changing and has changed you know, forever. Um, how can we apply technology? How can we apply? I mean, I think there's a new sense of flexibility. I want to believe, I don't know whether it's in Nigeria as well, as we got some of these matters. How can we apply all of that to ensure that we can retain people in the system enough to aspire to wherever they want to be? It's important to note that, okay. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. All right. It's important to know that the idea of, of um, digital Amazons runs under the umbrella of Street Project Foundation, an NGO I founded um, that uses creative arts as a tool to facilitate youth employment, cross-cultural dialogue, and social mobilization. And so in our DNA is community building. And so every young person who goes through our programs like the digital Amazons are part of a virtual community um, where we're constantly and consistently engaging with them. And that's why you could ask me what's happening to one of our digital Amazons or a young person. I will be able to access them or I already have the information about where they are and where, where they're going to be. And so in terms of the challenges that they face, um, we get that information. And also that is why we are partnering with women in advertising. And that's why we're not leaving them hanging. And that's where mentoring comes in. And um, they, they are taught the politics <laughs> of advertising. <laughs> no, but because it's so important. Um, um, a lot of them come in as entrepreneurs. Mm. And so they come into the system um, with that in mind, and it's important to cultivate that kind of mentality, especially in the digital age, and find ways to fuel it, right? Um, and so uh, having them come with that kind of mindset, it's um, having a mentor to be able to lead them to the top and even get them to become founders, of yeah. agencies, like we have, we've rightly said, there are very few women who have founded their 
agencies. Agency. And there are many reasons for that. One is even access to capital. They've got the ideas. But before a woman can get access to capital, like a man would, it takes a lot. It's about 2% general. And this is worldwide statistics. And so if we want to even promote more women to get into that, we also need to look at what are the parameters of for letting women into the system and association that, that shapes and structures the, the advertising industry. And then talking about how we can be more digitally minded and all of that. We are, and it's something I also have to talk to talk with about. Um, we're working to collaborating with more tech hubs okay. so that um, we're not just focused on the you the user experience and getting them to be the graphic designers the photographer but the creators of technology oh, that makes that happen um and where we should be moving to and 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 getting them to be able to create that would move advertising forward because you're going to have a, a more robust you know creative unit Lisa, or Lisa. creative organization where people Lisa, are was... producing products digital products Okay. Yeah. Yes. I was no okay. So I was going to give a perspective to what it is, um, Larry's question, and then also respond to um, something in terms of access to capital, for example, and all of that. So, the world today, after COVID, if any organization doesn't remodel in such a way that being a woman and having plans to start a family and everything doesn't affect your growth then such an organization should not even be saying the, the 21st century, what is it called? So mm. today, I mean, COVID, that's, those are some of the benefits of COVID that we insist on looking at. Mm. So um, if, 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 if you look at it, now you really, really, I mean, we have operated 100% virtually. We operated 100% virtually for a full year. Yeah. And and we delivered. So if a woman, so all of those concerns should, it just goes to show you that really, this, this, that should not be a, a, a problem for anybody who's got a future, a, a future or a plan in that kind of, um, in that direction. So it's not exit strategy anymore. It's gonna be actually growth strategy. We let's deliberately all to that and see how it's going to work for us as an organization. So if a woman yeah. says, I need to go on my whatever leave, or I need to be whatever, how can, okay, would you still be able to get it across to me? Or, okay, that's fine. You can go home. We can review from home. Gone are the mm -hmm. days of you have to sit down and wait till 8 p.m. when your boss is free to then have the review. Do you understand? So we need to embrace the change that COVID has brought. Interesting. Yeah, another thing is to, to then also speak to women empowerment and everything. We ourselves, and it's one of the things we do in training, be bold. I think we as women as well, we're a little less bold. So when a man is writing a proposal, I'd spoken to a bank um, official before and when, or I've been at different you know, seminars and they say, when a, my, a male um, this entrepreneur is bringing a proposal to the table. The kind of figures he asked for, the idea he has brought forward doesn't even warrant that. When a woman has brought an idea that will change the world and whatever, she comes with this very little. So we have, there's this little um, somewhat reservation from our end as well to take bold step and do bold things. Do you understand? Perhaps because the culture, and the um, society has formed us in a way that um, we're women and we perhaps are not expecting that we will be able to get such. But those are some of the stereotypes that the, the trainings and all of those things we're doing will deliberately correct. Okay, so, so can we safely say that um, uh, we're encouraging more women to come into our industry. I mean, given your experience this past two years, yes. or two, can we say that? I mean, uh, how far reaching is this message? Are we attracting people from different industries and all that to say, yes, I look forward to a career in advertising? Yes, we are. Um, I mean, we, 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 we did a quick impact uh, report mm -hmm. when we did the first um, and second quarter. 
um, COVID and all has made it a little difficult to measure. But I've also gone to schools, for example, to speak, and the kind of feedback, oh, I'm so interested in this. I'm so, yes, the interest is there. It's for us to make sure that the, 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 the industry is also prepared or encouraging enough for them to come. Do you understand? Okay. Because whether we like it or not, it's a different generation. So gone are the days of, no, don't worry, look at the future, uh, give of your time today. And then, no, they want the results and the reward of working and do whatever it is they do today. Oh, no. <laughs> right, and now, now. So we need to ensure that what we then have as an industry, and it's, 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 I believe we're, we're, we're getting there, we're creating it. We're having, and social media has also helped. Before now, a young um, person can, doesn't have any platform to see and measure and see, okay, okay, how is it, how are the people they're doing? Okay, let me follow a few people and whatever, whatever thing. There's so much that tells them the, the potential, the interest, the fun, the whatever it is. And advertising remains one of the most phenomenal, interesting, loving industry you can work. I tell people, it's my first love. I, I would not have survived. I'm not sure even as a lawyer, I wouldn't have ended up working <laughs> as, sincerely, it's just, and that's what we're trying to showcase to okay. women um, that we're training, that we're talking to, that we're facilitating. And beyond digital Amazon, there's so many. I mean, I, I, I was watching, um, uh, uh, I was going through, what was it on social media the other day? And I saw some speaking on strategy. And then I was going to speak on strategy. They call it the barefoot, whatever, whatever. Oh, thing. Yeah. During the strategist. They're so because it's broad. That's the yeah. truth. The place of, so now, now gonna even the days of, oh, I'm account management. And so I don't need knowledge with every, really everybody. Yes. Yeah. So even you'll find that even the, the account managers of today have an idea about conceptualization. They have an sure. idea because they have social media. You, you have to have a level of creativity in you to be able to manage your handle, to put mm -hmm. some things up. So, yes, we have some young, brilliant ladies in account management that when they see that the creative guys are busy, they get down to certain things on digital. And then when you're done, you share thoughts and all that. So that line is getting blurry. Um, okay. If you get what I mean, it's not as strict as, as, as it was in, in those days. Probably. We have less than 10 minutes. Uh to the hour of uh, four o'clock. So um, we don't have any question here, but if anybody has anything you would like to ask or contribute, you can raise your hand if need be, or just um, drop a question uh, while we continue uh, as it were. Um, let's talk about something which you hinted at at some point, and it's good to talk about. And I think it's one of the things that may be uh, a big bother for some of the women as well. Um, the issue of sexual harassment at work. Um, I mean, do you see the Me Too movement of a thing in our coming into our industry and people being bold enough to talk about some of these things and would that help to, you know, free the environment a little bit for them to thrive? Um, I, 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 I see it and then I also don't see it. So because no, I'm of asking us, that question. Uh, at the yeah. time, I, I had a, I had to give a talk at a, um, a picture 2019 or so, uh, C C E B B C B it or something. I can't remember exactly C -B that program. It. Yeah, C B yeah. And I had to speak to a couple of young, you know, ladies in advertising, and these things did come up. Um, yeah. So how big is this in our industry? Uh, maybe I mean, it so is. we don't go you know, sweeping it under the carpet. Yeah, confidentially. I mean, well, some, some time ago when we did um, some speed mentoring, some of the people that would speak to you confidentially, they mentioned it because we also have a very judgmental mentality. What were you wearing? So a lady comes mm -hmm. to you to say, somebody did this. She's already the victim. And the first question is, what were you wearing? What were you two doing in his office around 6.30? Mm -hmm. Or do you understand? Or... Haven't you heard that you like swimming? <laughs> yes. So what you, what you begin to have is people um, will, okay, so your boss tells you, I need you to come on Saturday so that we can review this thing. I mean, you're a very ambitious young lady with all excitement. You actually do go there on a Saturday. 
when both of you are the only ones that work, you had no idea, we need to review it and everything. And things happen. Mm. You are held responsible that shouldn't you know, didn't you go to school? Didn't you? So those kind of things, and some of the things we try to encourage young ladies when we're talking is irrespective of that, speak up. Irrespective of people saying whatever you need to speak up because it's, you, it, it kills with them. But, but sorry, so can, yeah. can I just say something? <laughs> just just Rita, just before then. Okay. Um, I mean that that is not bad as it were, but I believe that the opportunity of having some kind of structure like a wear and all that shouldn't you be moving towards you know influencing policy, influencing? Yeah, that, those that are was where I was coming I re- to actually. It is one of it. In fact, specifically, Kechi, um, when we had the last um, during the w- w- world. Um, Women's Day, International yeah. Women's Day, and when we were done with our, our conference, um, the virtual conference we had, it was one of the things that came up and it's one of the things we're addressing in that policy. As I said earlier, it's something we're driving and we intend to present to heads of agency as the next AGM before we yeah. then come out. And we need to agency. sign to it as a commitment. Yes, and as a, as a, we will yes. not encourage this. So it's and one of the things, it. yeah, and I, I'd spoken broadly to the fact that as, as a lady, you face challenges. But we are saying that let's provide a platform where we encourage people to speak up and where we take actions when people speak up. Do you understand? So what kind of actions, what are the things, what are the, because sometimes the, 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 um, the harassment is not very direct. So you begin to think in your mind, you begin to have a divided, am I over reading things? Am I, if you feel uncomfortable about anything at all as, the, as, as, a, as a woman, you speak up about it. Straight sure. on to the person involved where you're not getting the kind of, um, uh, what's it called? You would then escalate it. I mean, yeah. there are some that is, happens and it comes to the, is the state of escalation. You don't even bother, you understand. So yes, is the issue of sexual harassment is a very key thing we're looking at. We are planning to talk. <laughs> we am itchy to talk because the truth <laughs> is, um, it's it's something that's so dear to my heart because every time I, I I have an assembly of young women, the issue of rape comes up, and and it's rape? it's we it's rape, rape yeah rape no I'm rape. talking about yeah rape is rape I'm, and I'm not mincing words yeah. on this but sexual harassment violence against women and rape right generally but I'm not talking about the industry now with this I'm saying generally right um and so of course the industry is not isolated in this and if any young woman in the industry were to speak a lot of c-suite men will come down right their 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 um what i say their their reputation would be at stake but and the young women may not do not have the power not may it's a power play right do not have the power do not have enough women and enough men enough he for she's in positions of power that will protect their interest Mm. and so we need to fix the whole idea of having more women at the table where those policies are designed and ensuring that we communicate as communicators that we communicate these policies and that young women in the industry know exactly what do I need to do if I am harassed. Mm. Right. It's 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 one thing to just tell them speak up. It doesn't work that way. If you've been harassed, if you've been raped, if you've been maimed, it's very hard because it's a power play, and you must just know clearly how do I approach this. And that's where mentoring also comes in because a lot of quite a number of our women also who are now in power have been harassed one way or the other, and um, we there's a reason why women advertising and generally as in women who are in advertising are not as loud as they should be. I'm glad that in recent times, I'm seeing a lot of, you know, Triple A and is doing quite wonderful things, just throwing, throwing light on women doing amazing things. And we need to continue that. The I, louder we I, I are, do, the I, more dominate, dominant we would be in being able to address this sensitive issue issue let, let, let me say let me add something um yeah. um larry you see yeah. the issue the policy driving or it's one thing is one big thing at a very high level but i think the beginning of it all 
is the ability not to feel self-shame when you need when something so you can have the policies you can whatever thing if an individual which is critical and i mean as i said we are it's one of the things we're working on but one of the biggest thing is to deposit in each of those people the confidence to come forward do you understand that's what the me too um what's it called is about you see when you put policies in place when but people still feel a sense of condemnation and sense of whatever it is sense of that they feel, if I don't come forward and say that I've experienced this, do you understand? Mm -hmm. So to put in place there, so when we train, one of the things is don't worry, say there are policies in place, there's this, 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 but to begin to, sometimes you blame, you begin to blame yourself. Mm -hmm. I, the, the example I gave is not, is not like, it was somebody who confided in me, the um, reference Rita made about somebody who, he did not want, he brought his hand so close. I turned, he's an exec, he was an executive director at the time. I turned on him. I was really very firm because I'm not going to joke with that. And I walked straight to the CEO. So mm. sometimes you begin to also judge yourself because you have been shaped to believe what did you do that made him, do you understand? So it, it starts from, so as we're changing the policy at the top, we must be mindful to deliberately be telling this young lady who has who lacks all the confidence or what's it called to come forward when it's been arrested to say lovely, that lovely. own it yes and fight it to the end okay I, i'm going to just stretch this by five or so minutes because we started <laughs> um, waiting for people i mean it's getting really interesting <laughs> it's getting, I wish, in uh, <laughs> it's getting hot in here yeah <laughs> but let me add that i have two questions um from uh, a member of the audience and uh, uh, the two questions are quite related, so I'll ask them together. It's somebody I know very well, a very good friend from, uh, from Ghana, a Nigerian actually, you know, a Ghanaian, but he's, he, he has an agency in Ghana, uh, while they're doing a famosa. And the question is this, um, the first question rather. So the digital Amazon idea is quite interesting and much as it will help raise the bar for women in, that, in the creative industry, is it uh, restricted to Nigeria? He wants to know. Uh, follow up to that. If someone outside of Nigeria wants to participate, what is required? Okay, thank you so much. Um, we are starting with Nigeria, but the, the vision of digital Amazons is continental. Um, and a lot of, of what we will be doing would be based on the opportunities that are afforded to us. So for example, some of the things, one of the major things that we need is space, which women advertising has have been amazing in providing um, recently to make that happen. And there are also financial obligations to be able to trade because the young women do not pay a, a, a dime. It's a developmental approach to get more women in. And so if we're able to find partners, more partners um, on a continental level, um, we'll be happy to, to do that. Um, and to apply, usually um, you ha have to go to our website, um, www.streetproject.org.ng um, and also our social media handle Street Project Foundation. Um, where when announcements are made, um, a call for application will be put out and young women from anywhere in the world can apply. <laughs> yeah, so basically she's going to, be, well, when digital Amazon is moving to another market, they're going to be needing another wear in quotes, not necessarily called women in advertising, so, but they're working with the association. From and local, and yes, from local ex, um, expertise that will Absolutely. partner with them to, to be beautiful, able to drive beautiful. And Thank at you. this point, it's good to mention um, the partners that have supported us, um, yeah, World yeah, Connect from World New Connect. York, yes, um, Facebook, Adobe, America, F Philadelphia, and quite a number of agencies have also been supportive, Thank like you. DKK, like Vedanzil, like um, Yellow Brick Road. Um, have been supportive financially and, 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 and triple A and in itself, <laughs> in itself. has been support okay. supportive. Okay. I, 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 while we're just speaking about that now, just I just have a brainwave. Is there anything that Life Awards can do with, you know, the, the Amazon, the, the, the digital Amazon, as it were? Is there any way we can, you know, do something together, you know, for yeah. Life Awards? Well, I will take that offline with you because I'm also discussing with, um, um, we're also having a conversation with um, Dr. Lubodi, Tunjo Lubodi, 
um, okay. the international body. For IAA. IAA, okay. IAA, yes. Okay, for lovely. What we can do together. So okay. we can actually look at that and then okay. See what it is we can we can because uh, this is a live platform, so it will yes, be good to see is, where we can yeah. collaborate and, and do yes, perhaps even a recognition. So yeah. we can also one of the ones I can think of immediately is I mean at the end of the day yeah for for instance I, I, I was to, I was going to ask the question but that's another big topic really uh, which is where all these efforts should actually lead somewhere. I mean how are women portrayed in advertising or in communication generally you know and how can yes. we influence that what, <laughs> so how can we promote that you know so so so, so that so those are some of the things that perhaps um you know will so, probably like i said i'm bringing you guys back at some point <laughs> we, yeah. we, we but i, I want to say a big thank you to all of the agencies who have taken in digital amazons into their agencies um a very big thank you i can't mention them all there are a lot thank and you. a lot um it, it shows everybody. that color Yes, th that collaboration is um, the new competitive edge, and we're making yeah. it happen and making a change. Lovely. Yeah, thank you, so, thank you. Really, so thank I'm just going to give both of you one minute each for your parting shots and uh, thank our audience for being so wonderful. Uh, who goes first? Okay, I'm. I can wrap up first. Um, first, I want to thank you for the platform, Larry. It was fantastic when um, Shegun reached out to me. And was I was like, well, why not? I mean, it's 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 fun. I think even more so um, that Rita was joining and it was going to be joy. I think this is the first time you're having two panelists. Or no, two I actually guests. had at the beginning, up in the sky. Oh, oh up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you did. I missed. Um, I wasn't around for that. Okay, so um, thank you so much for it. Um, I also will just want to use this platform to encourage everyone. We'll keep coming um, and uh, to ask for your support with everything we are driving for women in the industry um, and we count on it and we encourage women to maintain some bold disposition um, and stay in the game. It's really, really nice at the top. So there's no need exiting. Thank you. You should know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, my words are for every young female creative who is listening to me, um, or any young woman who's listening to me and wants to come into the industry, is um, to, to overcome the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, and um, don't second guess yourself. You're good enough. You're talented enough. Don't let anybody tell you different. If you're working in an organization where um, what they call the gaslighting um, approach is being used, um, find that exit strategy to a better space. But whilst you do that, know that you are good enough and you can actually reach the very zenith of your career. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you've been wonderful and I've enjoyed every bit of this. Uh, like I said, you know, should there be any opportunity to bring both of you back, maybe to review, you know, um, uh, you know, the next stream of uh, digital Amazons? Um, I'll be very, very happy to to give you that honor of coming back. But thank you for all the work you're doing, Rita. Uh, thank you. For thank you so for, much. It's been for, delightful for being here. And thank you. And, uh, <laughs> thank you. I look forward to you know an industry where we have more women participating uh, at at the very top. You know, uh, I think that's where we should be. Uh, it's a global phenomenon, and people. I mean, if you remember, there's the three percent um, movement, uh, which is based on the fact that only three percent uh, women are at the top in terms of the creative industry worldwide. And they've been able to move the needle from three to about eleven percent in the U.S. in particular uh, to bring more women to the top of. Mm -hmm. And of late, most of the industry, most of the agencies, big agencies, are announcing women taking on really big. Uh, top roles in, in agencies around the, yeah because they're doing a split and insisting on okay yeah, this percentage yeah, yeah, for yeah, women yeah. So, of course so, you have so, to be qualified as a woman. Well, we need to be we need to be deliberate like i keep saying you know in this part of yeah. what else to ensure that we can of course based on merit not yeah. based on thinking oh can she yes. do it no. she's got stuff you know it, it's down to her in terms of how she wants to do it but starting point is that she can do it i think that's the that's the thing that needs to change uh, going forward so thank you so much for a very wonderful afternoon and um, thank, you. and thank you to our audience out there uh especially thank also you. from our brother from ghana for finding time to join this conversation um thank you so uh, for those asking whether this will be available yes it will be on our uh podcast as well as um, the, the the live award portal uh we will share these and make it um, go around 
Thank you so much. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Bye. 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 Bye.